Do not use these. Earlier this week, Hawaii passed a bill to ban sunscreen containing the common chemicals oxybenzone and octinazate. The bill follows research suggesting sunscreen with such chemicals that don't stick to human skin can hurt coral. Oxybenzone and octinazate can cause genetic damage to coral and other organisms living in the ocean. However, mineral sunscreen that uses zinc oxide or titanium dioxide are still allowed as they block UV rays while remaining environmentally friendly. But how do you know what sunscreen is the mineral kind? Easy. Look for the labels that say naturally sourced and fragrance free and check the ingredients. In a response to the bill, Hawaii Senator Mike Gabbard said he believes Hawaii is doing the right thing by banning chemical based sunscreen. He also added the bill will make a huge difference in protecting coral reefs, marine life, and human health. Be nice to the earth and you'll get a sticker. All of that glitter is bad. There's a new war brewing, and it's against everyone's favorite sparkly decor, which experts are now calling a global hazard. Glitter is made from millimeter sized bits of a polymer known as PET or mylar. Scientists consider it a microplastic and argue that it should be banned. Glitter filters into the oceans, where it gets mistaken for food by fish and other sea creatures, and can leach out harmful chemicals into the marine environment. A 2014 study estimated that the world's seas contain roughly 5.25 trillion pieces of plastic trash, with microplastics accounting for 92.4 percent. The UK is set to officially ban items that contain tiny plastics called microbees by 2018, with other countries also following suit. Some British nurseries have already taken up the call for no glitter and banned the use of the product in their facilities. Now, if only we can get the rest of the world to follow suit. UK to ban wet wipes to fight plastics pollution. Just flush it down the toilet. What could possibly go wrong? The UK government announced it will ban wet wipes as part of its 25-year environmental plan to battle plastics pollution. According to The Sun, the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs now classes wet wipes as a serious environmental hazard, along with plastic bags. Wet wipes are made from polyester and are non-biodegradable. Makers of wet wipes say their products can be flushed, but they do not disintegrate in the sewers like toilet paper, which lead to sewer blockages. According to The Guardian, a study from Water UK found that wet wipes are responsible for 93% of the material causing sewer blockages in the country. For those concerned about cleanliness, thank God there are still bidets. As for America, they'll continue to use good old TP, because smearing doo-doo all over your backside is better than cleaning it off anyway. Researchers discover that worms can eat plastic. Researchers led by scientists at Stanford University in the U.S. and Beihong University in China have found that the mealworm can safely biodegrade various types of plastic. Americans discard about 33 million tons of plastic every year, less than 10% of which gets recycled. A solution to this problem may be the mealworm, which researchers in an ongoing study found can subsist on a diet of styrofoam and other forms of polystyrene. The bacteria in the mealworm's gut is able to biodegrade the plastic as part of its digestive process. Researchers found that 100 mealworms were able to eat between 34 and 39 milligrams of styrofoam per day, which is about the weight of a small pill. The worms converted about half of the styrofoam into carbon dioxide, while they excrete the bulk of the remaining plastic as biodegraded fragments. Worms on the plastic diet remained healthy, and their droppings appeared to be safe for use as soil for crops. According to a Stanford University press release, the study is important because it contradicts the belief that styrofoam is a non-biodegradable type of plastic. Toxic red tide of biblical proportions plagues Chile. Chile's growing red tide crisis is threatening not only marine life, but also communities that depend on the sea for their livelihood. Red tide is a commonly recurring phenomenon in Chile, but the outbreak that has grown rapidly along the southern coast in the past weeks is one of the worst ever recorded. The toxic microalgae blooms that have turned waters red are lethal to birds and marine creatures. Consumption of contaminated seafood is also poisonous to humans. With tons of dead fish and shellfish washing up on shore, fishermen are left with no means to sustain a living. Scientists point to El Nino's key role in the outbreak, with warming ocean waters creating a friendly environment for algal blooms. 
But locals are blaming salmon farms that dumped contaminated fish into the sea and possibly worsened the bloom. Angry fishermen have taken to the streets to protest, even as the government declared an emergency zone and offered each affected family 300,000 Chilean pesos. Plastic eating enzyme created by accident. Scientists have created a substance capable of eating plastic. Researchers from the U.S. and Britain say they have created a plastic eating enzyme that could be used to aid in the recovery and recycling of plastics. The enzyme is able to digest polyethylene terephthalate, or PET, plastic. PET plastics take hundreds of years to break down and have become an enormous source of global pollution on land and in the oceans. Scientists made the discovery while looking at the structure of a natural plastic eating enzyme believed to have evolved in a recycling plant in Japan. Researchers added some amino acids to the enzyme, which ended up speeding up its plastic eating capabilities. The team will now work on improving the enzyme to see if it's capable of breaking down PET plastics on an industrial scale. Hey, it beats throwing plastic in the incinerator. Eating beans over meat could save the planet. A new study shows Americans should probably eat more beans than meat if the country wants to meet its emissions target. Cows emit methane due to a digestive process known as enteric fermentation. Most of the methane is released through belching, and only a small percentage is produced through flatulence. The massive amount of greenhouse gas produced by cows is comparable to the pollution produced by cars. Growing pulses is greatly beneficial to the environment, as they are able to directly draw nitrogen from the atmosphere and convert it into nutrients. This means a reduction in the amount of fossil fuels used to produce nitrogen to create these nutrients. It is also much more water efficient to grow pulses than to raise cattle. Beans also provide similar nutrients to the human body as beef, without the increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes, stroke, and colorectal cancer. Research shows changing the population's diet from beef to beans could help the U.S. meet its emissions target by 2020. Another study published in April recommended substituting meat with crickets and mealworms in order to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Would you give up your juicy steaks for beans and worms? A new way to stay cool without using power. Researchers at the University of Colorado in Boulder have invented a special film that can cool buildings without using any power. The cooling film measures about 50 micrometers thick and consists of a transparent polymer, tiny glass beads, and a layer of silver coating. The silver coating reflects sunlight through the plastic, preventing it from heating up the building. The glass beads constantly emit infrared light and heat through a process called passive radiation cooling. The cooling effect is said to be able to keep the internal temperature of a home at 20 degrees Celsius, even when it's 37 degrees Celsius outside. Researchers at Stanford University demonstrated a similar device in 2014. However, their technique would reportedly be expensive to manufacture in bulk, whereas the film developed by the University of Colorado team can be produced for around 50 cents per square meter.